Hey guys, and welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be preparing some acetamide. Now, acetamide is used as a building block for acetic anhydride, and that's what we're going to be using it for in a future video. There's a couple intermediate steps, but that's what we're aiming for. So, acetamide can be made fairly easily from urea and glacial acetic acid, and urea is found in fertilizers and some cold packs. I also showed how to make glacial acetic acid in a previous video. This can be simply done from sodium acetate and sodium bisulfate. So to begin, I weighed out 220 grams of urea-based fertilizer, which is a bit more than we actually needed. However, the urea fertilizer generally contains impurities in it, so I just wanted to account for that. Now we need to dry our urea at about 110 degrees Celsius to remove any water. You don't want to go much above 110 degrees Celsius, or else the urea can actually start to decompose and generate toxic ammonia gas. But it's also important to remove the water, as water will inhibit our reaction. So, after drying everything in the oven, the urea was crushed and added to this three-neck round-bottom flask. A thermometer was added in the sidearm to measure the temperature, and then 210 milliliters of our glacial acetic acid was added. I used a homemade heating mantle, which I showed how to make in a previous video, and this heating mantle only costs a couple of dollars to make and can reach several hundred degrees Celsius, up to 500 degrees Celsius. An air condenser was added on top of the reflux mixture, and it's important not to have water flowing through this, as the water will actually cause our acetamide to condense in the condenser itself, which would then block everything, which would be very catastrophic as pressure could build up. The goal of this reaction is to get the internal temperature to approximately 200 degrees Celsius. Acetamide will boil at 200 degrees Celsius, so when the internal temperature is at 200 degrees Celsius, all of our product will be formed, and the acetamide should be refluxing at around 200 degrees Celsius. It may be necessary to insulate with aluminum foil just to help everything come over. In total I refluxed for approximately 8 hours and then once that would happened I actually had the temperature at about 200 degrees Celsius. I let the reaction mixture cool but not to room temperature because we don't want our acetamide solidifying in the flask. But once it was cool enough I was able to transfer it into a round bottom flask and then set up for simple distillation. Once again, I used an air condenser. All of the acetamide was distilled over at approximately 200 degrees Celsius, and it was collected in a round bottom flask. And once again, before the acetamide could be cooled, I poured it onto a large baking pan so that it would cool there and wouldn't get stuck in the flask. I then took the baking pan and crumbled the acetamide off of it, and in the end we obtained 61 grams of acetamide. This corresponds to approximately a 30% reaction yield, which isn't the best, but not too bad. Now, acetamide can absorb water from the air, so it's important to store it in an airtight container. So, this is essentially how to make acetamide from household materials. It's fairly easy to do, and we'll be using it to make acetic anhydride, and eventually to make an indicator called ferroin, which is used in a reaction known as the belusov zabotinsky reaction. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in a future video. Okay, bye.